welcome uh, Quiva Dalton to the uh, stage. Can we get a round of applause, please? I am mostly a printmaker. So I do uh, lithography, which is acid on stone. Um, I'll show you some in a minute. Uh, which was how all the maps would have been made. Actually, I work in a, a studio called Black Church in Temple Bar, and all of the stones we have there, I'd say there's about 50 of them, were all donated by the OSI, Ordnance Survey, Survey Ireland, um, and some of them still have the old maps on them. So the way that works is they are these massive limestone blocks from one specific place in Bavaria, and you grind these stones down and reuse them every single time. And then you etch them with nitric acid and gum arabic. And you ink them up and you have something like these. Excellent. So I'll just um, pass this around. Maybe I'll put it at the back if you want to take a look and you can pass it along. So yeah, that's how you would have made all the, all the maps, all the books. Actually, I think for newspapers, they still use a kind of form of it, but it's on aluminium and it's not as fun, you know. Um, then also what I do is uh, intaglio printing, which would have been, I don't know if everyone knows Rembrandt here. All the ones that look like drawings, they're actually uh, prints from copper plates. So the way that works is you, I, I was planning on bringing some in, but Storm Agnes kind of stopped me, you know, I was not going to risk all that kind of stuff in the weather. But it's uh, copper plates that you then cover in wax, I'll dig a few of those out as well cover in wax and you draw into the wax and you etch that with ferric chloride. So here is an example of that. That would have been illustrating books or a lot of like just any messages you wanted to get out there. So you know, sorry. yeah, it's carved. Well, you can carve straight into the um, metal if you prefer and you get a fuzzier effect, but uh, uh, it's actually carved by the acid. So where you draw, imagine this is a copper plate. By plate, I don't mean like a plate, a dinner plate. I mean just like a sheet of copper where you cover that in wax and then you draw into that with like a stylus kind of thing and everywhere you've drawn into it, you place it in the acid. The acid's going to bite just into that area. So you can then, all of these you can reproduce as many times as you want, which is beautiful. You can sell a painting once. <laughs> you can sell these a good few times, which is a Andy. <laughs> so, yeah, I don't know if you want to pass that around, around there as well. Um, so, yeah, I'll just maybe pass this back. With that, Thank basically, where it's uh, carved into the metal, you ink it up, you wipe it off. The ink is only left in where your original drawing was, ideally. And then you run it through a very high-powered press. It's all very manual processes, which I love. You know, it's a... a you know, not very techy myself, so it's all just, uh, yeah, just so working you, with you, your hands. You enjoy working with your hands and you find that to be a meditative kind of yeah. practice in itself and therapeutic just for oh, the sake of doing yeah. Definitely, yeah. Uh, I mean, I'm sure most people here, when they think of printmaking, they've heard of screen print, uh, but wouldn't be my cup of tea. That's, it's way too quick. I didn't like to torture myself a little bit more than that. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, basically these two types of artwork were what I specialized in. I uh, did Intaglio and NCD in Dublin and they didn't teach lithography anymore because it's too much of a hassle basically. Um, but I went to the Netherlands to learn that and they're the only two you could do that doesn't take any electricity at all. So I always said when I was in college and doing my graduation and all this, was like when the apocalypse hits, you are all in huge trouble. I just have a little candle, I'm good to go. Like, <laughs> so, so take some classes quickly, you know, so when that exactly. comes, you know, you'll have uh, something to do. Yeah, I'll be printing all the maps and newspapers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Might have a few more of those. Same kind of deal. This is a much older one now. Just want to hold that up. That's done with a soft wax where you can get a drawing effect. So you can see with that one, this is the original drawing that was, would have been down on the wax. Um, and then when you lift it off, it lifts the wax off with it. So you can reproduce that drawing hundreds of times. So you can still print a Rembrandt today. Um, and yeah, basically the last type I have the sauce approves, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, the last type I have to show you is, is called a monoprint. Does anybody have any questions about any of the techniques or just any questions around uh, anything that's been discussed so far? Yeah. yeah. Just um, with like what your art is about yourself, like it's all quite, um, there's a kind of an ethereal kind of aspect to it and um, kind of folklore. Can you just tell us about like, where, where that comes from for you, like the subject of your art? Oh. Well, that's definitely the folklore aspect yeah. of it is um, something, question. yeah, it is a great question. That was something I've uh, always been really interested in. Um, especially then, a few years ago, I moved down to Kerry, and it seems like everyone there believes in ghosts and banshees. I've seen people being like, yeah, I definitely heard the banshee, and all those stories that, uh, uh, you know, kind of like word of mouth stories, that's what I'm really interested in. So most of these things would be from talking to people, you know? And I find even like across in different countries, you hear similar kind of stories and, you know, every country has their own kind of like fairy stories, ghost stories. I mean, I think Scotland had its own type of banshee. So, yeah, that kind of stuff. I mean, during the pandemic, I got really into folk cures because everyone was obsessed with health and sickness. So that was a huge thing for quite a while as well. <laughs> so, yeah, all that kind of like word of mouth, uh, just stories that everyone, I mean, everyone has a folk cure. Like even a flat seven up, I think that counts, you know? <laughs> so, and you can, <laughs> you can, yeah, definitely. Actually, if you wanted to add in a few different colors, it gets more complicated. So say if you were printing, this is just one stone, because I didn't feel like adding color. I know you can see color there, but that's actually some gold leaf I added after. Uh, if I wanted to add color to this, I'd need to get a second stone and use the color on that and registrate, like line them up, registrate them perfectly. You see all the registration marks on the back so I can line it up with the stone perfectly each time. I don't know if you can see that's very small. And that stone would have the second color. So imagine if you wanted like five colors, you'd need five big limestone blocks, probably as big as that. <laughs> so could do color, be a lot of effort, probably should. <laughs> Seems like you like the torture of it, so, you know. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> Yeah, I do. Well, I paint as well, which is a lot easier to get in the colour then. But um, it's not something that really I was ever that interested in. I mean, I uh, studied in the Barcelona Academy of Art as well. I did academic studies for a while. And they get deep into their colour theory there. So I have done it. Um, but it's a whole other ball game as well. There's all these different tricks to art, but yeah, definitely could. But I think there's more depth in something that's a bit more monotone. Mm. That seems like uh, ironic, doesn't it, in some way? Yeah, I think you kind of sacrifice form to colour a lot of the time. Um, Great, yeah. and so you have one more to show, oh. is it? Well, it was just the last technique that I just happened to have in here. It's called a, a monotype print. Now, all of these you can reproduce as many times as you want. Uh, hundreds of times, doesn't matter. But uh, the monotype, there is only one of each one. It's called a painterly print. So basically with these, I use the same copper plates and ink them up and remove ink with Q-tips or like steel wool or pencils, anything that will make a mark and lift some ink away. So yeah, all of these ones, there's only the very one of. Now all of these, there's only what's left now as well, because afterwards to preserve the value of them, you destroy the plates afterwards. So yeah. Thank you very much. Maybe we can uh, pass that one around. Is that yeah, okay? Yeah, work great. Um, excellent. You wanna maybe there you are. No, that's my ex-boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> I want to do the same thing myself. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this yeah. looks more like a banshee. You can have that one there. <laughs> So if that's done in ink, does that have to be a very quick process, like throwing ink? Yeah, those ones are a lot quicker. They're just like, I try to knock those out really quickly. Um, you know, because if you're working on the same stone or the same plate for a few weeks and trying to get those acid mixes, there's a lot of chemistry that goes into it. If you're trying to get all those, uh, all that, kind of, you're going to get bogged down a lot of the time. And a lot of mistakes you can't erase. So they take quite a while. But those are a lot quicker. It kind of loosens you up a bit. Just nice sometimes, just have instant results, you know. <laughs> Is there any other questions anyone has? 
me. Yeah, please. It seems like quite a niche um, art form. And so obviously you probably did a lot of other things like like pencil sketch art and you said you painted before this. So what led you into this form of art? Actually, I did this originally. So I went to college to, to, to do this. Yeah, I think probably because it was so niche. <laughs> Uh, but I started painting, I had, like, because a lot of it is to, has very specialist machinery. So my uh, studio uh, would have all that kind of stuff in it. But obviously during the pandemic, I couldn't get there. So that's when I started painting. It was kind of out of necessity. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Thanks. And um, yourself had a question? Um, yeah. So limestone uh, blocks that you use to etch the, the inside, like when you're happy with a certain amount of prints, yeah, because there's no going back. So basically the way you do it is there's a massive big sink. I don't want to get too technical with things because I could go on for days and this is meant to be 15 minutes and I know everyone's tired. <laughs> so there's a big massive sink. So imagine your stone is this big. You use a big lift, bring it over to the sink. And then I have all different grades of carborundum, like basically like grit, um, you know, like sandpaper without the paper. And I start from 80 and work up to 220 with water and the grit and another stone. And uh, back to meditation is very meditative. Mm -hmm. So basically you grind off the image with going up through the grits in a really specific motion because the stone has to be exactly, exactly flat. So you have calipers coming out every few minutes and all this, just to make sure it's completely level. And uh, you grind off the image and it's gone forever. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, you mentioned you, you teach some classes. Yeah. Are they I active do. at the moment? Do they have, happen on certain days each week or have you got more information? They're then? usually, well, I mainly do the lithography. Um, I do intaglio on request, but I'm the lithography teacher in the Black Church Print Studios. And they are two day weekend workshops because it takes quite a while, obviously. Yeah. Uh, you're not going to get it done in one day. So the next one is the 14th and 15th, the Saturday and Sunday of October. Great. And they're um, based in Dublin, are they? In the city? Yeah, just in Temple Bar. Great. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. So, uh, yep, they're, they're only uh, four people per class. And, uh, but yeah. It's great. Really so, good. a great present for a loved one or yourself. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Uh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> um, so, I'll, I'll also, we'll, we'll provide information more in the classes as well. Um, so, thanks so much for your uh, presentation there and sharing your work. Let's give a round of applause. Yeah. Thanks for having me.